David Bizard here, and you are watching Power Attack 10. In this issue, I want to deal with uh, air filters and uh, KNN air filters in particular. Now, let me tell you what's prompted this. Um, I'm a big fan of the Project Farm series of videos. We recently tested Hex Allen keys and there's a huge difference between the brands. But what about Hex Allen sockets? We've got a bunch of different brands to test today, so let's get the testing underway and see which brand is the best. In the first test, we'll see which brand can handle the most torque. Then we'll see which ones can handle impact and which ones will snap. At a price of $15, the least expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Pittsburgh and sold at Harbor Freight. Uh, this guy, and please excuse me, I've forgotten his name. Brain surgery again, right? But he does a fantastic job of testing stuff that you and I would not bother to test because we have not got enough incentive to do it. We'll just buy that apart we think is going to work and go with that. Things like, I don't know, okay, pull something out of the hat here, saw blades, right? And he does a great job the guy's ingenuity is second to none however if you look at the videos you have to ask yourself how accurate is he well let me make a point here he tests in the same with the same mental um uh how shall i say mindset yeah that's the word so i'm looking for that i do he tests and you get to see the results he does not give an opinion other than the fact there's slight opinion involved in the summary at the end. But that small amount of opinion is based totally on those test results and it's a summary to help you make a decision. Now this is the same test strategies that I use. I dyno test stuff or I test it and you get the results. You do not get my opinion unless I go to great lengths to make sure I am giving you just an opinion. When All those you... numbers are from Mr. Dino, they're not my opinion. That's important for you to remember. You know, the reason I bought a Dino, and at the time I think I was probably the only guy who wrote articles, and I'm going to avoid using that word journalist, but wrote articles on the scale that most professionals don't even uh, aspire to that actually had a dyno because the amount of bs delivered by the industry is unbelievable yeah I, I still can't get over that but anyway so my point is this is our mr project farm right every time well i cannot say whether the conclusions drawn by the testing are representative of what we uh, actually see. I'm damn sure that 99.9% .9 of the time he's right on the money. And do I use his advice? Oh, sure I do. That's how confident I am. But there's one thing that I was watching on there when he did an air filter test. I'll put the uh, a link to it going across the bottom and I realized that he made the same mistake on testing the filter the KNN filter as virtually everybody else that I'm aware of has made you see the KNN filter is not just a tack barrier that's what a paper filter is a KNN filter is an active filter and that means that regular filter tests do not apply to it. I'll go into that now, but first, the chronicles of DV's uh, experiences starting from square one with KM filters. So here we go. The year is 1976 and I'm living in Tucson, Arizona. And that year I attend my first SEMA show. 
Specialty Equipment Manufacturers Association show. Anyway, in those days, it was held at the uh, Anaheim Convention Center in California. And uh, at that time, I had just wrapped up doing the uh, uh, manuscript for my best-selling book on minis. It was basically had a hot rod movement mini, right? Engine mods and chassis mods and everything. Of course, I didn't know it was going to be a bestseller then. But anyway, part of it was a um, uh, expose on air filters, mainly those available for minis. Nothing else was applicable. And I have to tell you, the selection that was available was pretty abysmal. If they flowed, they didn't filter. If they filtered, they didn't flow. That was universal. On my Mini at the time, I used a big paper element and I made my own filter case. In it. And that's what I raced on. That filter case actually increased the power slightly. Right? I told everyone that I was uh, sacrificing a couple of horsepower because I couldn't afford to rebuild the engine by then. They all bought it because that's what they expected. Anyway, whilst I'm at the uh, uh, show, I uh, come across k and Air Filters, and I get to meet the boss, Kenny Johnson, who later becomes a very good friend of mine. Kenny's one of those few people who's not only a good practicing Christian, he also is a very good person. Anyway, the thing is, that uh, we got talking about air filters, <laughs> who'd have thought? And, and I said to him, what do they flow like on the flow bench? And he says, well, we don't have one. We know they flow all right because they don't lose any power if you get the right size on them. So, of course, not knowing anybody at k &N there and, and being aware that there's a lot of BS in the industry, I thought, man, nah, that's a good excuse. And I said, tell you what, I've got a flow bent, send me some samples and I will uh, flow test them and let you have my, my test results. Anyway, I got back to my shop, which I was, uh, it actually wasn't my shop, it was uh, my friend Denny Wyckoff's shop and uh, he let me share it with him. And uh, uh, ab about three weeks after the SEMA show, he gives me a call uh, at my office and says, there's a box here for you, a big one. What, really? I'm not expecting anything. I said, how big is it? Uh, he said, well, it's pre pretty much comes under the heading of giant. It's about eight feet long, about five feet wide, and about four and a half feet high. And I said, that's big enough to get a small boat in. He says, yeah, it is. He says, you better come and open it. Um, so I went over there, and sure enough, it was from k &N. When I opened it, they had sent me virtually one each of every filter they make for cars and trucks. And I thought, well, I can't possibly test all of these. So I selected those typical for a small block Chevy because I was working on a small block Chevy book and sent the rest back, right? Then I started flow testing the, uh, a couple of filters. I think it was like a 10 by 4, a very popular size for a, a, a small block Chevy equipped vehicle anyway. And sure enough, those filters flowed really well. I mean, they outflowed everything else by a huge margin. So this left the question of how well do they filter? Well, I called up Kenny on that and he's... Uh, everybody whose engine lasts on the Baja 500 and thousands are using our filters, right? They can actually run that event in those terrible volcanic dust conditions without having to change them or even do anything else, but maybe knock the dust off them. So I thought, well, they flow pretty good. And uh, so 
so anyway, the, the next time I saw him, which was only a few weeks later, um, I said to him, so have you got a dirty air filter? Right, and I'll check to see if they flow. He says, well, not really for a before and after, right? And I said, how do you know they flow? He says, oh, they do. You know, he says, even with eighth of an inch of dirt on. And I said, whoa, 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 Kenny. Uh, what you're trying to tell me here is your air filter knows how to select the dirt that actually allows air to go th past both the dirt and the filter element, right? That's a pretty clever trick. I mean, this must be a, an air filter with uh, artificial intelligence. And he says, well, I don't know how it all works, but it does. So anyway, he says, uh, we're going to test for the Baja uh, 500, right? Uh, I, he says, I usually do a pre-run deal in my um, uh, uh, Baja buggy, Volkswagen Paraguay, right? So what we did there was put a, do a filter, right? And I, unbeknown to them, I smeared a bit of oil on the inside of the filter case and put my initials in there. The case was then wired shut with seals, right, which I overlooked. So I knew it couldn't be tampered with until the next time I saw it. Well, they uh, ran the Baja pre-run thing, and meanwhile I went back home to Tucson, from California to Tucson. And about a, a week later they called me up and said, OK, we've run the run, come and take the filter off and take it back with you. So I went to their Riverside uh, uh, plant and um, uh, took the air filter off, checked to see that it was untampered with, and there's my initials inside with not a speck of dust that I could see on it. But the outside had anything up to oh, three sixteenths of dirt, that very fine uh, volcanic dust. So... It was easy for it to fall off, and I wanted to get this home without disturbing that dirt. So what I did was I got a cardboard box of the right size, and I put cotton in there, and it hung the filter inside so it wouldn't touch anything. And I closed the box, and then I went down to Ontario Airport carrying this box, right, to fly back to Tucson. It's only about an hour and a quarter flight. And anyway, I got to the um, uh, security and, you know, those guys knew that that had a bomb in it, that box. They knew. You couldn't believe. I said, no, i got to carry it on. What is it? What is it? It's an air filter. You don't have to be that careful with it. So anyway, eventually I showed them what it was and then they wanted to see inside it, right? But, so I took the air filter on. I eventually got on the plane, flew back, went from straight from the airport to Denny's shop where my flow bench was, put the f filter on the bench to because uh, I got the before figure with a s similar and identical filter and flowed it. And I could not believe how little it dropped flow. I'd got some paper elements the same size that were brand new and flowed less than that dirty air filter. That was my introduction to air filters. Every time I made a guess on it, I was wrong. Uh, somebody needs to apologize for the fact that they said, I think I'm always right. No, there was two occasions right there where I made, I had preconceived notions and I was wrong on both occasions, right? Anyway, the thing was is that air, fil air filter worked. Now let's look into the technology that's behind it so you can see, understand why. Now I'd like you to stop and think about this. How could we have a can air filter with maybe three sixteenths, even as much as a quarter of an inch of dirt on it, still flow as much as a brand new paper element? What was the trick here? Surely the dirt should now be the limiting factor and the construction of the filter should be irrelevant. Well, that's the way it looks. And I must admit, 
it took me ages to figure out how the filter worked. First off, I thought it was electrostatic. Now, I've got to tell you, this time I had done a whole load of uh, formulas and things like this on sizing and, and that for KNN, which, by the way, is in their catalog. All that, all those formulas and everything, that's what I did for them. Right? They, what they did was they had me as a consultant to, uh, how shall I say, optimize uh, filter use and to find out how it actually worked. Well, my first guess was it was electrostatic uh, because Kenny said, well, the, the oil has got like a two volt static charge uh, on it, residual charge. Okay. So we set up um, a deal where we measured the voltage across the air filter, the static electricity built up as the air went through it. And to, for it to work like I expected, I thought it should generate at least 20,000 volts, right? And uh, we fired that engine up. It never got over two volts. So that was obviously not it. So now I had a real problem. How the hell did it work? Well, I happened to be talking to a, a very good friend of mine who was a heart specialist. He's also my personal doctor. The reason he was my personal doctor was he was also a, a very personal friend. Anyway, he happened to be talking about uh, lung tissues because I've not got very good lungs. Right? And he said that the lungs have lots of hair on them, uh, little hairs, little uh, things that stick up and they wave around and they sweep the air. And I thought, whoa, just a minute. That may be how a KNN works because it's not a paper filter. It's a cotton and wire gauze filter. Now, the thing is, is if you hold that filter up to the light, you will see big holes in it. I, and I'm talking about holes that can be as much as five thousandths of an inch across. Filters have four layers of this fabric sandwiched between two layers of metal mesh. Let me show you. So this is your filter material. Two layers. Three layers, four layers. There's your filter. There are, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there are big holes in this filter. <laughs> All right, well, people are not buying these filters for their particle retention capabilities. I mean, come on, we all know that. <laughs> people are buying products like this to gain some extra horsepower. holes in it, I, and I'm talking about holes that can be as much as five thousandths of an inch across. Um, so theoretically, they should be able to let a 4.9 thousandths uh, 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 dimension piece of dust through those holes, right? But it doesn't. Why is that? That's why I looked at the electri electrical thing, thing, thinking maybe the particles were attracted to those hairs on the cotton and they stuck to that, not the hole. Regular paper filter, the dirt goes for the hole. That's why they plug up. So once there's a bit of dirt in every hole, that filter doesn't filter. The KNN's different. Here's what happens. As the air go, as the pulsing of the engine draws the air in, right, those little tiny uh, uh, strands of cotton, uh, you know, the furry bit of the main cotton stream, look at it under a magnifying glass, they do this. Now, you can see that there's an easy path for air to go through there because there's still holes. But those deals, my fingers, are sweeping the air. And what happens is the particle of dust 
hits one of those fibers, the oil on it causes it to stick and it stays on the fiber. It doesn't plug the hole. Now here's the downside. If you take a can and air filter and put it through the regular assaying tests where they suck air at a constant depression, what happens to those elements is they just fold in like that. There's no vibration there. So the filter actually filters far less capably than a paper filter. On the other hand, when it's attached to an engine, it filters way better than a paper filter. Now, when our friend, God, I still can't remember his name. My apologies. When our friend at Project Farm tested, he tested steady state. That meant that the k n air filter showed worse results than some of the paper filters. When in practice, you put it on a, a Baja or an off-road vehicle, and it's the only filter that will survive the dirt without a power loss. That is the story of k &N. If you want to buy a filter that is that cannot be beaten for performance, you buy a KN. Now there are a couple of filter companies out there that have copied the KN filter. And there's one filter, S and B. It is hard to figure out which is which if you I showed you two. But the S and B is a nylon or an artificial fiber. It doesn't have this. It doesn't filter very well and it doesn't flow very well. Now there's a lot of other filters out there. There's a green one out there that's made the same. Uh, I say a lot. There's several, right? But if you are not sure of how good the filter is that you're going to buy, just do yourself a favor and buy a K&N. Thank you for watching.